I have been waiting for a car like this. What's going on everybody? Today I've got the brand new LaserNut Racing Ultra 4 Low C Tenacity. This vehicle is modeled after the Armada built car raced by Cody Wagner in the full size Ultra 4 Racing Series and King of the Hammers. This new Low C has some fantastic scale proportions really showcasing this very unique looking Ultra 4 car. If you've ever seen photos or video or in person the full size version of this car then I think that this model may really impress you with just overall how well proportioned, how good everything looks. A lot of times when you downsize the vehicle to RC, sometimes proportions kind of get a little off and it just never looks quite right. But this one, it's not the case. Like I mentioned before, this is the Losi Tenacity base, but it's been stretched to a 15 inch wheelbase. It's got these large 5.75 inch tall tires modeled after the BFG KM3s. They've got some replica style race line wheels on there. They don't appear to be branded race line wheels, but the full size version runs these copper coated race lines and copper is kind of one of uh, laser nut racing or Cody Wagner's kind of signature colors. So they added that to this makes it look just even that much cooler. Overall, the track width on this truck is 13 inches wide. So this is a big vehicle. It overall, it's gonna be a little bit bigger than something like the Axial Bomber. If you really appreciate scale styling, but you're looking for something that has more performance for jumping and on the track, things like that, then this might be a perfect choice for you. But the scale details on this truck still has a pretty long list. Let's run over some of those first and then we'll get into some of the other specs of the actual platform itself. As I mentioned, this is a 5.75 inch tall BFG KM3. It's about two and a quarter inches wide. So it's a, a aggressive tire. The tread depth is aggressive as well. Looks like it should bite pretty well. The compound feels good also. It does have a typical 2.2 3.0 wheel. So the inside diameter of the wheel is larger than the outside. Helps clear the knuckles and carriers on the A-arms, but allows you to have a better style as far as scale goes on the front face. We've got a nine LED light bar across the top of the windshield, and then we've got two four LED pods at the bottom of each A-pillar. Tucked up under the nose of the body here is a small little faux worn winch. It's almost completely out of sight. You really can't see it unless you're really paying attention or looking for it, but they just did it for the scale factor, something that they added. It's got the worn decals here on the front of the nose as well. So nice to see that just those little extra steps were taken. Speaking of things like that, in the rear section of this vehicle, you've got a small little scale exhaust that runs along the back side of the body itself. Of course, we have the Lexan body panels that are obviously a very close replica of the full size. And on those body panels, there's some scale hard molded plastic panels that are kind of plastic riveted in place. So you've got three here on the front of the hood. You've got some here up in the front fender area and then in the rear fender well, as well as a couple on this rear cowl. So some extra steps were taken to add depth and scale realism to the vehicle rather than just using a very simple sticker, which could have easily been done. We've got a Lexan molded interior that has a couple of driver figures molded in as well and it has molded separate hard plastic helmets for each the driver and passenger and then attached to those helmets is actually a soft molded like rubber style hose that goes up to what looks like the filter these would be a pumper setup for when these people are racing in the desert it would pump fresh air into the occupants obviously in the real world this is just a cool scale detail that they went a little bit further on between the driver and passenger up mounted on the cage there's a small fire extinguisher that's separate we got a couple of radiator fans, decals here in the back area. And then we have this sway bar, which is interesting in a number of ways. For one, it is very high up for scale realism compared to how the full size version is set up. Now it's mounted in there, but it's mounted to this plastic caging, which there's another reason that that's pretty interesting, but we'll get to that. So it mounts through this cage and then comes back and the swivel point for the sway bar also lines up roughly with the hinge point of this whole cage. So if you pull two of these body clips in the front, this whole cage now will lift up. So since the rear swivel point for that sway bar is in line with the hinge, that allows everything to function properly. Another nice feature of this sway bar that I have to assume is kind of a happy accident is that you can just flip that sway bar a little bit forward and then the body won't come down. Like a 
kickstand kind of. The sway bar is a multiple piece design. The torsion rod that goes between the two halves is separate and is retained by a small collar. The rotation point for the sway bar arms has two bearings on each side. So there's four bearings total in this sway bar setup alone. We mentioned the LEDs earlier. The LEDs come out right here along the A-pillar line and there's a three into one JST connector that comes back and then it has an additional plug right here at the base of this hinge. So if you want to take off this body, you only have to remove this extension plug from here and then you can remove the hinge mechanism itself. It's nice that they took some extra steps with those scale details to still make sure that everything is easily serviceable. The cage itself is fairly simple, but still has some good rigidity. When you have the lid closed on this, you're gonna be picking this thing up by the cage. So it feels like it's got enough rigidity that it's probably gonna take that without much problem. Another scale detail is these driver and passenger mirrors. I do have a little bit of concern about those mirrors just because they're rigid mounted to the cage and they kind of stick out. I feel like if anything, you could snag these and possibly end up breaking the cage or best case, at least you just break the mirror. Something to maybe watch out for. And then one other little body detail is you got this little cutout here at the bottom of the door. That would actually be where you'd put your foot in so you could easily climb into the vehicle in the full scale. But that's why you have that little half moon cut there. When you put the body down in place on this, the side of these molded chassis plates have some little retainers that help rest on the side guards of this chassis. And it really adds a bunch of side rigidity to the body itself. Makes everything feel nice and rigid. Doesn't just feel like this simple cage topper that falls down onto the chassis. It really helps to tie everything together and it feels good once you have it here on the bench and everything's tight. We've showed how the cage flips up. A couple of other things about the chassis is that we do have a hard mounted front bumper. There is no you know, plastic spring mount on that front bumper. So it's very rigid and it ties back into the aluminum shock tower. So that's, you know, there is no give there. Hard hits are going to be transferred. But one other nice thing is that there is a full length chassis brace from the back of the aluminum shock tower in the front to the front of the aluminum shock tower in the back. Nice one big molded piece across there. Hopefully impacts hit with that front bumper will transfer nicely and not cause any damage to those molded diff cases. The molded brace going from front to rear does also have a molded in wire guide so that the wires coming from your Spectrum Firma 130 ESC run along that brace through that guide and then cleanly back to that 1900 kilovolt motor. The Spectrum ESC is one of the smart ESCs. So if you're in that ecosystem and you wanna use that telemetry features that it already has built in, then at that point Point, it's a ready to go candidate for what you already have. It does come with a Spectrum DX3 radio and it already does have telemetry function on the radio. If you're using smart batteries, you can take advantage of that. Speaking of batteries, this vehicle is compatible with 3S or 4S batteries. The pinion that's pre-installed in the vehicle is a 12 tooth pinion, a mod one. If you wanna run 3S, then they do include a 14 tooth mod one pinion and they suggest that you switch to that to regain a little bit of your speed. For me, I'll be running a 5200 milliamp 4S pack so I'll be using the pre-installed 12 tooth pinion. The chassis is set up with a standard kind of eight scale style center differential, just a pinion and spur in there attached to a open differential case. You'll be able to tune those with fluid changes, anything like that that you're used to doing. We have a front, rear, and center differential in this vehicle, so a lot of tuning capabilities for you. All of that is mounted to this aluminum chassis pan. Feels great, it looks good, it's completely closed up, so no openings in the chassis for debris to come into. We've got these molded plastic side guards here that kind of extend the side, and again, tie into those side panels of the chassis. The size of the battery box on this is just over five and a half inches long by just under two inches wide. And then as far as height, you've got a lot of room there to go. There's three Velcro straps included to really hold your battery in place. The battery box area does sit up about a half of an inch off of the base of the chassis, but that's because it kind of hangs over these plastic side guards. So they had to raise it up slightly to get it to clear. So the battery isn't quite as low as it could be, but to get everything to fit cleanly, I think that was probably their best option. I briefly mentioned before that it's got aluminum shock towers, front and rear, and of course, aluminum box 
bodied and aluminum capped Losi shocks. They feel great out of the box. According to the manual, it appears that they're filled with 35 weight oil front and rear. I couldn't find any information in the manual to find out what weight fluid is in any of the differentials though. The DX3 radio is binded to a 6100 AT receiver. That is one of the AVC receivers. So kind of like a gyro or you know driver assist. If you would like to adjust the strength of that, you can use the steering rate button on the DX3 radio. Steering is controlled by the S614 Spectrum Servo. It's got 201 ounce inches of power and the transit time is 0.2 seconds to 60 degrees. Not a super powerful, not a super fast servo, but we'll see how it does out of the box. It is connected to a pretty soft feeling servo saver, so I don't imagine that you'll see much damage to that servo based on how kind of soft that system is. The rear of the chassis has a full size spare tire and a rigid rear spare tire mount. This would all be removable if you didn't care for the look or possibly if you saw this as a hindrance to the performance of how you're looking to run it. It might look a little stubby in the rear if you take this off in my personal opinion. Opinion. But if it's just not for you, again, looks like it's going to be easily removable. So that was a quick once over on the bench, but the most important part now, and take this thing out and find my most ultra four looking area, a mix of some desert types, some rocks, maybe just put this thing through its paces. I've got the battery charged up, going to hit the road and see how this thing does.